he was still better than I was, even, even with his disability and some of his struggle. I was like, man, Tony, you just, you can play. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Today, I know who is going to get this guitar, and they have no idea that it's coming. Nominations have closed for these two guitars, but still taking nominations on this semi-hollow X Horizon guitar that I'm building. Welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. Last week, you got to see me give the twin to this guitar away. I build custom guitars, high-end quality guitars, and I'm giving them away, and this is your guitar. No way. And I'm hoping that it will just be an affirmation for you that you're on the right path. Wow. So you built this? Yeah. This is yours. Wow. So. Man, I don't know what to say. Come on. Man, this sounds amazing. It was really tough to decide who was going to get that guitar. Going through all those nominations and realizing that there's just so many people who are deserving of getting a little extra boost. A lot of people that are servant-hearted just have a, a giving heart. And uh, yeah, I, I wish I could show up at a lot of doors to give them away. In all those nominations, I realized that there was another one that I just felt led to give this guitar away to as well. So I need to finish this one and give this guitar away. Also, I'm going to be working today on this back of this neck here. Uh, these dowels now have been in this guitar drawing for four weeks. So now I'm going to sand this down and on another video I talked a little bit about it but I let this dry plenty so that it eliminates or lessens the amount of ring that you will see after it gets poly coated and uh, the change of just different type of wood and the moisture can change and it allows for a little bit of a ring that you might see on the back. But I've learned that the way to prevent it mostly is to let this have plenty of time to dry and acclimate uh, together with this wood. So I'm going to start to shape this a little bit more and do some sanding on this one. Marty and I are going to be going on a vacation. I know we just got back from one, but we're doing something we've never done before. We're taking a sabbatical, so it's a little bit of a, an extended time. And I'm going to be taking these guitars with me to work on sanding them and doing some of the detail. This one, I've got just a little bit of detail sanding that needs to get done, and then we're going to get the stain on it. But today, we also get to do unboxing. Got another warmeth neck in, and that's going to be for this one. I always enjoy opening these necks for the very first time to see, I don't know, I like wood grain and I just get a little bit of a thrill from seeing the different types of wood grains and what it looks like, the details. I think in one of the upcoming videos what I want to do for you, because I've answered this question from others, is uh, how to buy a warmeth neck and get a quality neck for a fairly low price. Because a lot of guys will go into their uh, computer and start adding the things in on what they want on the guitar. And the next thing they know, they're paying $500, $600 for a guitar neck. I get my guitar necks from Warmoth for a whole lot less than that. And it's just by making a few of the right choices and knowing that, well, if I'm really going to upgrade certain woods, then I will end up paying more. And there's reason for that. But but I can get really good quality necks here. Dig down through all these all these peanuts to get to the to the neck. So here we go. Oh, that fits so nice. 
And again, like on the other one, I'm going to be shaping this heel and bringing it so that it, right now it's a little bit wider than what the neck is. I'll be bringing this in so that this all curves in really nice and sleek. Makes for a really nice, nice neck heel. I'll be using a Dremel to carve the scroll work in here. And I've just got a simple little template that I put in here. Well, it's not really a template, I guess. Drawing that this corner here lines up here. And I just line up those edges. And once I've got it in place, let's see there. There we go. And to a degree trying to make so that this and this is about the same thickness around here as it comes in with that little bit of a paisley look to it. I'm just going to put another little bit better piece of tape on it now. Now that I know where it's at. And then I use just the back of a, it's a little paintbrush. And I just kind of go along here, rub it good. And it never comes out looking like a really great, nice line. So I do that, and it gives me that. And that's going to give me just enough of what I need to come along this side of it. There you go, that gives me what I need to work with. And then I'm using this ball. And the key is you don't go real deep with it. You just kind of, I just take a couple light passes through. And then on this edge, I actually do something I think that's probably a little different than the original cloud guitars were. I can show you that as we get to it. Let me get my safety glasses on. And it is always a little bit sketchy because, you know, it's kind of freehand. So you got to be really careful how you handle the Dremel. You notice I don't go back and forth because the, the bit will react with the wood differently going one way or the other. So I'll just turn the guitar so I can continue to make the same motion with my hand going the same direction. And then the rest of it, I will now use, just use sandpaper to shape in there. I'm actually going to bring this line down just a little bit and make, make it a little bit like we do the scroll on the body side. So I just need to turn it here. So it looks just a little bit rough there right at the moment, but I will use sandpaper and come around and clean that up so that looks so that looks good. So now it's just a lot of handwork, sanding, getting that shaped the way it needs to be. That gives me my initial groove. Uh, I I don't think I'm even an eighth of an inch deep on this. It's not a real deep groove. Well, this is just a real nice mahogany neck. Feels pretty good, looks good. Nice Indian rosewood fretboard on it. I get the medium jumbo 6150 uh, frets on there. This one I went with a 1016 compound radius. I oftentimes do just a straight 12 inch radius. I also like the 1016 and I just decided to go ahead and do a 1016 on this one. Um, that last one that I did was a straight 12 inch. This one is going to be a 10 16 inch radius. I suppose we can go cut out the headstock. I've already got the template for that from the last one.
today I had a call from an old friend of mine. Um, his name's Tony. And Tony's like four, maybe five years older than I am. And we went to the same school all growing up. I mean, from elementary through, through high school. And Tony was one of the guys that kind of inspired me for guitar playing. There's a few inspirations that I had for playing guitar. And he... He was pretty good. Anyway, so part of Tony's story is that uh, he went into the military, went into the army, and he ended up getting stationed over in Germany for a while. And then I remember one night my mom saying, hey, did you hear what happened to Tony? And and I had it. I didn't know what she was talking about. And if I'm remembering right, I think he was working out or he had just worked out or something. He did a lot. He lifted a lot of weights and stuff. And uh, anyway, he ended up with a brain aneurysm and he almost died and he was in the hospital for a long, long time. He did really do a lot of recovery uh, to the point where he was able to work again and stuff. But then he ended up later on starting to have seizures and stuff and he would still play guitar. And so some years back, I, I got together with him again. And um, at that point, <laughs> He was still better than I was, even with his disability and some of his struggle. I was like, man, Tony, you just, you can play. Well, then over the last few years, it really got hard for him. It was really difficult. So he kind of quit uh, playing altogether and just kind of gave up on it. Today, he gave me a call and said, Steve, I've been watching your YouTube videos of the guitars and I think I'm ready to try playing again. Uh, for a long time, he couldn't even think straight about how to do anything. And uh, apparently, he feels like he's gotten uh, enough recollection, enough of it's come back that he says, when I'm listening to songs being played, I can picture in my mind what they're doing with their hands. And so he's ready. He wants to try. So I just got to be honest. It, it costs me to build these guys. And so if you would consider... Uh, jumping over to my Patreon page and checking that out. And if you're interested in partnering with me on that, that'd be awesome. Then hopefully one of these days in the near future, I can record him playing and include that on one of these videos. I told Tony I would be honored to build him a guitar because really he did do a lot of, uh, he gave a lot of inspiration to me. Yeah, it's just a joy to do, and I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it, too, and I hope you get really interested in just watching, get it put together, and then we'll go let Tony play. No pressure, Tony, because I know you're going to be watching, but uh, we're excited about it. It's going to be fun. Yeah, come along for the ride, and let's bring Tony some joy. We'll catch you later, guys. Keep fighting for joy. We'll see you next time.